Hey guys, and how's it going? Welcome to part five of the 1929 Mercedes SSK kit car replica build and more progress this week coming up. But I uh, got the new gas tank in and uh, I'm gonna see if it fits here for the first time. And again, uh, I've used this on uh, about four of my other projects. So I just have it on the floor jack and let's get it up into position. and. According to my measurements, it should fit very well right up in between here. And this is the same way like the old Chevy pickups in the 60s were done. Gas tanks up in the back. And it's 8 inches deep. And this is a 16 gallon capacity tank. Time to get this gas tank mounted. So what I'm going to do is I have it in place where I need it to be. Um, the distance between the back rail of the car and this rail that's in here, I want that to be the same. So in the event uh, I get hit from behind, this will, this crossbar will have some give in it before it hits the tank. Same thing up here, I want to avoid the Pinto mistake and have some space between the, uh, the rear end and the gas tank and I'll put the shield in. but. I have no place to run the straps. The straps that are going to hold the gas tank up against the frame and that's how it's going to mount. But you can see here I have a space I have nowhere to put this top bolt and then likewise over here. So I have some one by one steel from my scrap pile that what I'm going to do is cut this to length and then I'm going to mount that up underneath the frame here on both sides like that weld it in and then I'll have a place to run my two 5 16 inch bolts down and then hit the straps and I'll do the same thing up here on the front of the tank up underneath the frame. Um, the other issue I have is this tank is almost the width of my cross rails and I only have a little bit of tank here holding on to the, uh, the edge. I think what I'm going to do is I have some more angle iron for my scrap pile. I'm gonna make like little pads that go in and I'll probably just cut these maybe two inches and then I'll mount them, I'll weld it in here and then I'll put a piece of rubber underneath. So I'll have a mounting pad here, here, and then on the other side over there. So here's the tank. Man, this thing turned out really super nice. Very cool. Got it all bed lined. I like using the Rust-Oleum bed liner. Uh, it comes in a spray can and this stuff is tough as nails. Uh, I'll put the link in the description on the Amazon if you want to pick up a couple cans, use it for brackets, for tanks, or whatever you might. But uh, looking really good here um, from the rear view. The, in the tank's eight inches deep. It is a 16 gallon tank. Um, I have a filler neck that came with the tank on here, and it's just a screw top cap. And uh, the pan of the trunk is going to come across here. I'll just drill a hole for that. And again, I can elbow this off into the side uh, of the body for an external filler cap if I need it. Otherwise, I'll just open up the trunk lid and put some gas in it. Um, here are my cross brackets. Here are my straps that I welded in. Um, and then here are my mounting pads for the tank. There is a piece of rubber up underneath there. And uh, I decided just to uh, go ahead and run one inch all the way across instead of having like a two inch piece on either side. Worked out really good. And then important too on a fiberglass body, uh, and also when I have the rubber mounts here, uh, I wanna make sure I have a good ground strap so there's no sparks. Uh, sparks are bad around gasoline. Um, so here's my ground strap um, going to the front. And most important, I do have the original Pinto shield, uh, the gas tank shield. Um, in part four, my last video, if you'd like to go see it, I gave a lot of history of the Pinto. Rear end collisions, explosions, fires uh, that cost a lot of lives. Uh, I go into some detail on that, but that's the $11 shield um, that wasn't placed in the rear end of the car because it was another $11. And uh, anyway, check out my last video uh, on my playlist. But anyway, the shield's back in, and in the event of a rear end collision, this tank goes forward. Um, 
that shield's gonna give it some protection against the rear end hitting it and then causing the tank to rupture. But uh, that wraps that up and uh, gosh, that turned out really cool. So let's take a look at getting the steering done today. Um, I touched on it a little bit in my last video, part four, I think I was up to. Um, but here's the steering column out of the Pinto and it ends right here. And originally this would go on to the universal joint into this fitting right here and then a little length here. And then that goes into the uh, steering box through a, like a little flexible spline joint. What I'm gonna have to do is extend the steering wheel back much further in this car, almost two, two and a half feet. And as I mentioned, there's a metal plate welded here and I'm assuming that's for a pillow bearing uh, for the steering shaft to come down through here and then hit this U-joint. But what I'm gonna have to do is go to a double D, uh, what they call double D steering link. And you see a lot of the custom car builders like Kindig, West Coast Customs, and, and such, uh, the hot rod builds, the custom car builds, and they all use a double D type system for the steering linkage. Uh, I have it pretty easy here. I'm gonna have a straight shot uh, into a universal joint here. But on some of the custom car builds I've done in the past where you have a V8, you have headers, um, you need to get around the headers and get to the steering box and usually right into the rack and pinion steering in the front. So it presents a challenge. And how you do that is with a double D shaft. Let's go take a look at what we need to do. So this is a double D steering shaft. And if you look at the end of the shaft, it's shaped like two letter D's. If you were to split this in half right here, that's the letter D, capital letter D on the other side. And what it is is a three quarter inch piece of steel round stock. And both sides are machined down flat on one side and the other. And that allows you to go into what they call double D steering joints, universals, whatever you might need. So the idea is the end comes in here. You have these locking bolts uh, that unthread here. So you drill a hole through the shaft and then it that hardened Allen key bolt will actually go through the steering shaft and be a safe way of doing it, securing that joint. And then you have a jam nut here. And then this other Allen key bolt is just take up some of the slop so it doesn't rattle around. So this is a U-joint here. Both ends are double D. All right. And then I measured, and on the end of my steering shaft, I have a one inch uh, double D would actually fit right on the end of the Pinto. So I kind of got lucky there. So I'm going to take this bolt out, put it on the end of the steering shaft, and then I'll come on to the main shaft and then measure the length I need. And then I'm good to go. Where the metal is welded, that little tab on the frame that comes up, uh, that's where I'm going to have to put either a pillow block or I like using uh, these shaft supports. Uh, sometimes they're called Heim joints, H-E-I-M. You see them on like tractors on the three-point hitch in the back and it allows good rotation and then the shaft to spin inside here. So it's a really good way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is drill a hole through that metal plate um, and then adjust my distance I need and I'm good. The one thing you have to watch on these universal joints is when you use them, you can't bend them more than 30 degrees. So you have to be careful of that. If you need more than 30 degrees, they sell a double universal joint. And I'll kind of show you what it might look like here. So if you have a double universal joint or a double double D universal joint, um, there would be two of these kind of mated together as one unit. And that'll allow me to go not exceed 30 degrees on one side, 30 degrees. So if I need like 50 degrees of bend going down into the steering box, then I go to a double universal joint in the double D. So I'm gonna get this on the end of the steering shaft and let's line this up, do some measurements, and then I'll need to modify the existing Pinto linkage going down into the uh, spline shaft. So here's the end of my steering shaft. I'm now converted to double D on the one inch side. And then this is my three quarter inch side. I have it mounted. I have my through bolt that goes through the shaft out to the other side. I have my uh, slop adjustment screw in, and then I have my jam nuts on. Now it's time to test fit 
my steering shaft here if I can get it in. And I'm in. So now I need to calculate my angles where my U-joint needs to be in here. Chop this off and modify this. And then uh, convert this solid steel shaft to a double D by machining down to the sides to fit the universal joint. And uh, put my heim joint or my bearing support in here. Should be good to go. Looking good so far. So the original Pinto shaft is converted into double D. And now I can see my alignment. We're about, I need to cut this. And I need to make sure I'm not exceeding 30 degrees. So I have a little mark in there. I think I'm gonna come up another quarter of an inch. And I have the rod up in the steering column. And I think about another quarter inch. I'm going to pull this up a little bit. Should be right about there to cut the double D shaft. So I laid out my line onto the metal mounting plate that my bearing shaft, shaft bearing is going to be located at. And that's roughly where it's going to be. So just in line with the shaft. And this is my pilot hole I've already drilled and uh, I just need to increase the size of the hole to match this. Check this out. The new double D U joint is in good clearance. The bearing mount is in the shaft mount. My adapter from a one inch double D down to three quarters looking good. All the shafts are nice and tight and there's no binding. I have steering now. Very cool, smooth as butter. So I need to take the end of the Q-tip with a little bit of white paint and mark where I need to drill the through hole for the Allen bolt to go through the shaft. Up here, in here, and then also there. Tighten everything up, get a nice coat of paint on it, and uh, that's going to be it. So cut the end off of the Q-tip, dab it in a little white paint. Go into the hole on the flat side. Leave a little dab where I need to drill the hole through the double D bar. And then I need to move this to the flat side. My bar is even inside here. And this is not the hole, this is. Here's my hole for this one. A little dab of white paint in there. Here's the original Pinto steering coupler. And in between, um, if you look at your truck or your car, most likely you have one of these um, on the older vehicles. But there's like a rubber piece of plastic in here on this one. And uh, you can see it's got some cracks in it. And this actually takes some of the vibration out of the steering and gives you a flexible joint, universal joint. So I went down and picked up down at uh, AutoZone, right on the shelf at Dorman. Uh, we used to call these rag discs. Now they call them cup, steering coupling discs. Um, and that's gonna go in here. But to do that, I'm gonna undo these two bolts and then I'm gonna have to grind off the heads of these rivets, pop them out, and then they give you everything you need in the uh, new kit. To, to put it back on. It's a good thing I changed this coupling disc because, I don't know if you can see that, but man, it is definitely cracked. Ready to, ready to fail. So, 
That was about a $10 fix, didn't take much, but uh, check your steering coupler disc and uh, see if it's cracked like this, and if so, uh, you need to get it replaced. You can't replace it yourself, have somebody do it for you, and uh, it's going to save your steering. Some more progress last night. Uh, replaced the water pump. You can see it down in there. Also, the thermostat pulled everything off, cleaned everything, painted everything. Um, next thing is to get this valve cover off um, and uh, look at the adjustments on the valve. Maybe see where they're at and get this off cleaned up, painted, and then get some high temperature black for the manifold, exhaust manifold on this side. But I got the speedometer in, and it goes right in the hole here. And uh, the guys made it up in a couple hours, so very nice job. Also, I opted for this little screw-off thing on the cable here. And what that allowed me to do is that if the speedometer's off a bit, because of my rear-end gear ratio and my diameter of the tires, I could pull this off and put a gear reduction in between and then screw this back on. So it was like another 7 8 bucks to do that. Um, so that makes it nice, but uh, the reason I went old school here with the cable is I already had the gauge uh, that matched uh, all the other fuel gauge, temperature gauge, all that stuff, and I needed to plug this hole anyway, so just decided to go old school. Um, let me show you an alternative to running speedometer cables, new technology. So this is my 1929 Ford Model A truck with a Cummins turbo diesel in it, Allison transmission, and it is a beast. But uh, rather than running speedometer cables, I actually have a GPS speedometer in this. So this thing is truck cab. I chop stretched it, made a steel roof for it, but the steel's original 1929, and that's 93 years old. But I have a speedometer in here that has a GPS built into it. So this is a GPS speedometer as I'm going down the road in a 93-year-old truck. Um, but I did make the frame and everything custom. Um, but I'm using satellites for my speed. Uh, I think that's pretty incredible. 93 years old and I use a GPS speedometer. But this is made by Dolphin. I like the look of the white gauges. Um, and these are, uh, I guess, a division or made by Speed Hut. So if you go on to speedhut.com, I'll put the link in the description and just plug it in, put the power on it, and uh, it'll sync up with a satellite. And then down below here, I have my little reset button um, for programming. So you can do your, you know, zero out your miles on a trip, that sort of thing. And that's a little red button down below it. But, uh, Really cool alternative. A lot of guys doing custom builds now are, are using uh, GPS speedometers. It's pedal time. Time to get all the pedals working. Gas, brake, and a clutch. So I think what I'm going to do is tackle the brake first. And uh, the frame already has these mounting plates, so this is the next piece of the puzzle to get done. Um, so if I take the tube that's on the end of my brake pedal and this has the fitting for the brake plunger and put it up in here and uh, and then it'll tie onto that but I need to go into probably that hole right there but you can see I'm going to be hitting the uh, steering column so what I have to do is slice off a piece of the uh, tubing on the left of the brake pedal and then re-weld it onto the right hand side and then that should line everything up so I um, need to take a measurement probably bring it in right about the there market and then I'll weld that piece and that'll give me clearance on my steering column and then also my plunger is going to be in line with the uh, master cylinder so that should work so I'll bring you back when all that's done A lot of progress this week. So the brake pedal is in with the shaft where I cut off the left side, welded it onto the right side to move this arm over. The brake plunger, if you can see that, is perfectly in line. 
with the, uh, the shaft. I got a washer and a keeper pin in here. And uh, from the side, it's also parallel. So uh, good deal there. Working on the clutch now. And I got the clutch figured out. Uh, I had to go down to Ace Hardware and I got a bushing for the inside of the shaft. 3 8 inch bolt. And now the pedal, same height as the brake, so it's good. Need to put a stop in here. And then I need to get a linkage made up. Um, there are parts missing in the parts box, so I'm going to have to make up. So I found a hind joint at Ace Hardware and I have a emergency brake cable coupler that I'm going to go on to here and then most likely uh, have a threaded nut on here welded on something like that where I can adjust the sound out a little bit. So next I got to figure out the uh, accelerator linkage. Uh, I ordered a universal hot rod cable for that and uh, I think that's going to be it for the week. Uh, productive week. Take a couple days off over the weekend here. Um, getting my list uh, scratched off slowly but surely. And uh, again, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any comments, leave it in the comments. I read them all, I respond to everybody. And uh, if you see something I did right, hey, let me know. If I have something I did wrong, let me know. But uh, that's it for the week, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.